All right. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today for a new Are You Ready series. Um, I am going to pull up my screen just so I can share with you um, some of the information that I would like to share. Um, while I'm doing that, my name is Kelly Thawley, and I am the college and career specialist for the school district of Lee County um, in the career and technical education department. And we are extremely excited to be partnering uh, with Junior Achievement of Southwest Florida to present this webinar series to you. Um, students in the past, you have probably taken part in our Are You Ready webinar series. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and pull up my screen so that I can show you what we're going to be doing. So if you have participated in Are You Ready Before, this is part of the Future Makers uh, success series, and this will be posted both on the Future Makers website and for the School District of Lee County on our YouTube CTE channel, and I will show you that at the end of our session so that you'll know where to find this afterwards. Uh, we're going to be doing the free informative webinar series for students, teachers, parents, uh, anybody who would like more information about entrepreneurship and honing some of those business skills. So this is perfect for any student in career and tech ed um, in any course because entrepreneurship and those skills are uh, easily transferable to any sort of career field. So you will use these skills no matter what you will be doing. So please feel free to tune in with us every week. Uh, we'll be doing this every Tuesday afternoon from 4 to 5 p.m. starting today and running through May 9th, which will be our final session, and we will be having a panel of experts experts on that day. So without any further ado, I would like to uh, introduce Leslie Folly. She is the Education Coordinator for Junior Achievement of Southwest Florida, and she's going to fill us in a little bit more about what Junior Achievement does here in Southwest Florida. It's an amazing nonprofit organization. Uh, they have a ton of resources for our schools, for students, for teachers, and then she will introduce uh, the wonderful volunteer that we have with us today who's going to be running us through the series for the next few weeks. So turn it over to you, Leslie. Thank you for being here. Hi, thank you, Kelly. So again, my name is Leslie Mufali. I am the Education Coordinator for Junior Achievement of Southwest Florida. We are a nonprofit organization that has been around for over 100 years. Um, our goal is we inspire and prepare you for success by connecting what you learn in school with life outside of school. Um, we bring in professionals to teach you about finance, work and career readiness, and business ownership or entrepreneurship. And one of the guest speakers that we are bringing in for this series is Mr. Jeffrey Eakin. Um, he, we are excited to introduce him. He has devoted his career to providing businesses, nonprofits, and governments with financing for growth. Um, this includes taxable and tax exempt bond financing for healthcare institutions, airports, industrial development projects, and total financing packages for the management buyout of manufacturing firms. He's the co-founder of three equipment financing companies with a focus on servicing the needs of medical equipment providers. Jeffrey also taught finance and entrepreneurship at Liberal Arts College and became the school's director of the Center for Entrepreneurship he is a former 20-year trustee of a children's rehab hospital, a former independent director of the NASDAQ listed airline industry service company, a United States Coast Guard 50-ton master, and he's a longtime sailor and a longtime youth volunteer. He's been working with Junior Achievement for uh, quite a number of years, and we are super excited to have him on board and to be teaching JA Be Entrepreneurial. So thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, students. I'm glad to be here. So today we're going to talk about um, not a business plan, not a prototype, not a finance model, not a business plan, but about the mindset of an entrepreneur and about what entrepreneurship is about. Um, remember that all of the things that I'm going to say are generalizations. They are not facts. So when we talk about what kind of skills an entrepreneur needs, those are generalizations. Many entrepreneurs have those skills. Many of them don't. Um, and throughout this, I'll probably say a couple of times, if you really want to be an entrepreneur, 
find a good partner. Uh, so with that, what is entrepreneurship? Well, we can go to the extremes, the Harvard Business School, sort of the citadel of business education, and and talk about uh, what is entrepreneurship. You can go to the next one. What is entrepreneurship? They say it's a, a pursuit of opportunity beyond the resources under your control. Very simply, that means you need help. And if there's a key to this, entrepreneurship is not doing this alone. It's doing it with a lot of other people where you're the head. Or you see an opportunity, but not, do not have the human, real, or financial resources to seize it. Next one. So after completing the learning topic, you'll be able to define entrepreneurship in your own words and some key qualities of entrepreneurs. Has any, have, uh, we have actually got three students there. Just, I'm asking you the question, you don't have to respond, but if any of you started, actually started a venture, and that could be something as simple as walking pets, child care, we used to call it babysitting, child care, beating jewelry, uh, baking cookies, et cetera, where you either now are paid or you're not paid, but maybe you should be paid. You've already started down that path. And what you did was you saw a problem. Next. How do you solve the problem? I'll, I'll tell you a personal bias that I have. I don't like the word problem because as we'll see in a couple more slides, problem has a negative content context to it. It, it gives me bad feelings. I like to say, how do you solve an opportunity? How do you solve a challenge? So here's a real simple one. Every time you wash a pair of sweatpants or hoodies, the drawstring magically works its way out of the clothing. You've even tied bigger knots at one end. What can you do to solve it? That's a very simple one. Is it a business? Probably not, but I don't want to be too, too quick to judge that. So think about and jot down in your own mind, what would be some of the solutions? I'll give you a second. Would one of the solutions be to make the cord continuous? So that rather than having it ends, it's just one big loop. Or what about magnets on the ends to keep them together when they're in the washing machine? Or one of those clasps that you probably have on your backpack that holds the cords tight where you squeeze it, pull the cords tight, release it. You might do something like that. So it can be small and it may not be a business, but it's the way you think about things. Rather than seeing a problem and stamping your feet and being mad at the sweatshirt string, you try and find a solution. Next. So an entrepreneur is a person who starts to run his own, they use the word business. And to me, a business is, it's some person or, or organization that offers a good or service, something physical or a service. It gets paid for that and more money comes in than goes out. But there's also the opportunity to solve problems inside an existing organization where you're an employee. This isn't a new business inside the business, although I've done that. This is just helping on solve a problem. That's called intrapreneurship inside the company, or it may be a social problem that really has no organization that you're trying to, trying to uh, work for, but rather just the general good. Next. And it may be that, that part of that might be related to, um, and you can go ahead and start playing this. Um, re related to uh, Hurricane Ian, you see some social need in your community. So here we go.
Great, we can go back. Thank you. So if you were wondering what Wales was, W-A-L-E-S, that's a country in Great Britain. Uh, and it's, that's, that's their approach to it. So these are sort of universal ideas, things that they talked about. And you might jot down, in addition to the ones that were listed there, positive attitude, creativity, relationships, organization. Those are all, those are all characteristics of many entrepreneurs. Um, Nick, you can go to the next one. Three types of entrepreneurs. This is their definition. I wouldn't, I have a different definition. So small business. So a mom, pa, grocery store on the corner, coffee shop, gas station, auto mechanics, hairdressing, all kinds of businesses, tech startups, and social entrepreneurship. I would define them a little bit differently. One, as I define one type of entrepreneur as a person who is developing a job. Um, it could be a lawyer who hangs up his own shingle after working for somebody else, and it, he makes as much money as he can charge per hour. That's a job. The next is what I call lifestyle. The lawyer is successful enough that he's able to hire a couple of young associates, and he hires them out at X dollars, and he and his cost to them is less than that. So he hires them out at $100 an hour, and he pays them 50. He makes the $50 on his own. It changes his lifestyle. He can live at a much different level. And he may have probably still have one office, maybe a couple offices. Or wealth, which is a, a business that has many outlets, many employees, and many customers. It could be international or national, and it very well might be a public company. But I would caution any person seeking to start their own business not to focus on wealth. Um, that's a that's a uh, dangerous occupation. I had a mentor when I was in early on in business, and I had lunch with him one day, and I said I was a little bit concerned about my business, where my customers were coming from, what they were thinking. And he said, don't worry about your business. Worry about your customers. Take care of your customers, and the business will take care of itself. So focus on that. So next one. Oh, I would also, uh, go, yeah, you know that one. I also would make this comment that not all these, these, uh, these characteristics are universal. Um, one story about Apple. Apple was started by Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Wozniak wanted to give everything away. He was a techie gook, gig techie geek, and he wanted to give everything that he developed away. And Jobs had the idea to make just a business. They were so disorganized that they hired an accountant and they gave him gave him 10% of the business. They were so disorganized that the accountant refused to work for them. And he sold back his 10% of Apple in the early days when there were three of them for $800. He, he would be worth today with the 10% of Apple, hundreds of billions of dollars. So that's because they weren't organized. They weren't particularly nice people. They were uh, a little self-centered. So don't get too hung up on myths and facts. So myths, so let's go to the next one. A myth, it's a myth that entrepreneurs must be experts in their field. I think it's important that you know something about the field. Most entrepreneurs who start a business have worked in the business. So for you to be in the coffee business, if you wanna start at a coffee shop, I would hope that you would have worked for, maybe even worked for Starbucks, it's a leader in coffee, or one of the other tea, or Dunkin' Donuts and understood the coffee business and what it takes to make be successful. But you don't have to be an expert in it. There are only certain type of people that could be entrepreneurs. That's just not a fact at all. It's a myth. All kinds of people. And some of the students that I taught in college have turned out to be successful entrepreneurs. Uh, and that surprised me because I didn't think they had it in them. Entrepreneurs only go into business to make money, to get rich. Uh, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a uh, dangerous place to be. It might end up that way, but I don't think that's a goal that you want to start. The fact is entrepreneurs are creative and try to new approaches to seize on opportunities. Anyone can benefit from learning the skills and characteristics it takes to be entrepreneurial. Even if you spend your entire career working for somebody else, you'll be a very much more valuable employee. A positive mental attitude is the first step to success and entrepreneurs seek new opportunities to explore. Next. 
Adopting the right mindset is the first step toward being an entrepreneur. Anyone can benefit from learning the skills and characteristics it takes to be entrepreneur. You don't have to start your own business to adopt these characteristics. Next. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about how you go about doing that. What are the characteristics of a growth, what we call a growth mindset? And you can call these anything you want. If, if you come up with it, you can go to the next one. If you come up with a hot word that reminds you of these, then use it. After completing this learning topic, you'll be able to differentiate the important components of a growth mindset from a fixed mindset as a foundation for entrepreneurship and describe the life advantages of embracing a growth mindset, mindset whether or not you're being going to be an entrepreneur. Next. How did you learn? How did you learn to ride a bicycle? I'm, maybe some of you were able to climb up day one on that brand new bicycle or one borrowed from your sibling and get up on it and ride it successfully. Uh, most people don't. They get up, they're wobbly. Somebody has to hold. Remember I talked about getting help. Somebody has to hold the back of the bicycle while you steady yourself. You make a couple of vain pedals and the belt bike goes over and you fall and you skin your elbow and your knee. But you keep getting up and trying it again. If there's a single characteristic of an entrepreneurship, in my mind, it's what's called grit. The ability to be knocked down and get up and learn something from what you why you've been knocked down and get up and try it again. Or in some cases, to make the decision, you know something, this is just not something I really want to do. That's okay too, because if you don't want to ride a bicycle, don't ride a bicycle, get a scooter, ride a horse, be a walker, be a runner. But uh, you, you always not doing something is, a, is an option if you have an alternative, if you have an alternative solution to that problem. So that's how you learn to ride a bicycle. Next, a fixed mindset, a growth mindset is the positive belief that you can control your ability to learn and improve. I can do this. If you center your thoughts on growing and improving, you will. Uh, the Michael Jordan basketball player saying is 10,000 hours of workout before he was able. He was a, Michael Jordan got cut from his high school basketball team. He's clearly one of the greatest basketball players in NBA history. But he got cut from his high school basketball team. So what did he do? He went back and worked on it. Next. As opposed to a fixed mindset, which is locked, negative, that's particularly strong in my view, negative way of thinking. It's a can't do attitude. Nothing changes, no matter what I do. I'm just not good enough. I'm not smart enough. What use is it? So we have the growth mindset, which is positive and growing, and the fixed mindset, which is locked, and it's mostly locked in the past. It's not about the future. Whereas the growth mindset is about the future. Next. So which mindset it, is it that you want to be in? I got a higher score on the driving test this time. Next. So again, the, just the differences between the two. A fixed mindset is negative, unwilling to change. Failure is an un inevitable. Nothing is possible. Effort is wasted. Whereas a growth mindset is positive attitude, willing to change and take chances, cautious chances. Failure is an opportunity. Failure is an opportunity. So with the use of that word, I'm going to make a comment that's my, again, this is my own personal belief, is that I don't really like the word failure. I like the words success and less than success. And so if you try something and you succeed at it, great. Know how you got there. Learn something from it. Uh, most of our learning is not from our successes. Most of our learning is when we don't, when we have less than success. If you have less success and you learn something from it, it's not a failure. You've learned something from it, so it's just less than success. If you don't make your goal and you haven't learned anything, that's a failure. So failure is an opportunity to learn more. Everything is possible. Effort is cumulative, constantly learning. Next. So the question is, do you wanna change your thinking and change your mindset from fixed I'm just not good at this, I give up, I'll never be as smart, I'll never get this, and I'm never going to get this. I can't make it any better, I made a mistake. Ooh, that's a terrible, oh, I made a mistake. 
big deal. It's not good enough, as opposed to the growth mindset, which I'll try the strategy that I've learned. I'll, I'll, I'll add one here. I'll ask for help. I'll keep trying. This may take some time and effort. With a little help, there we go. With a little help, I can get there. I'm on the right track. What am I missing? Mistakes help me improve. This is really my best. Is this really my best work? So I think a lot of this is uh, the reason we're talking about mindset is this is in here. It's not it's not the, how do I solve that particular problem, but the belief that you can solve it or if you can't solve it, you can ask for help or if it's truly unsolvable after all of your work, then accept that that it's not solvable by you. It may be not by you, not right now, not in this time frame, not with the resources that you have, but maybe you just need to find somebody else. Next. So the advantage of a growth mindset just in life in general is that it provides greater comfort in taking risks. We all have to take risks. We get out of bed in the morning and there are risks involved. There just are, that's life. It'll give us the courage to reach the lofty goals that we have in life, whether it's in education, family, lifestyle, where you wanna live, whether you're whether you're <laughs> tired of hot, humid weather in Florida and you wanna to move to Alaska, uh, it'll help you do that. Higher motivational level, higher performance level, and a sense of being in control of your own destiny. So you'll notice that the image that they use in the background is uh, light bulbs. So whether Thomas Edison invented the light bulb or refined the light bulb is an ongoing question. But the, the truth is that he was the one that developed the modern light bulb. The, well, now the old modern incandescent light bulb. He did, didn't invent it, sit down one day and try some experiments and come up with a light bulb. The story goes that it was either a thousand attempts or 10,000 attempts at developing the bulb, the filament inside, the gas that's inside of it before he found the right combination. So it was persistence in his life that got us to where we had modern light bulbs, not just some one miracle that he woke up one morning and said, aha, I have it. So persistence is probably one of the more important goals of being an of having entrepreneurial thinking is the belief that if I didn't solve the, the or didn't uh, come up with a solution this time, maybe I'll do it another time. And again, maybe I'll seek some help in, in my doing that. Next. Okay, why don't we play this one?
So that was all about growing and improving your abilities, whether it's, uh, again, as an employee, as the owner, founder of a small business, or whether you're growing into a big business. So one of the things that I saw in that was the, with the uh, little test tube on the growth side. I had a, a met a woman who worked for a chemical company, and she was a research scientist. And they were researching for a chemical, which if you coated materials, would retain heat, re hold heat. And one of the things that she developed was a chemical that allowed metal to dissipate heat, get rid of heat, get rid of it. And she, she, this was early in the days of computers. If there was a day when we didn't have computers, they really did exist. And she went to the people at the company and said, I think this has opportunity in the computer industry. Are you interested? And they said, no, <laughs> they said, no. They had the fixed mind mindset fixed mindset and they had no interest. So she said, me, I have the idea. And they said, sure, you can have the idea. So she took the idea. And when I heard her speak, uh, this was probably about 15 years ago, her material was on 90% of the computer chips that were made in the world. Because the, the disadvantage of smaller in chips is they heat up faster. So the more stuff you put on your phone in a small place, where is it? There's my phone. In a small space, the more heat is generated and you've got to get rid of that heat or you'll cook the computer. That's what your phone is, it's a computer. You'll cook it 90%. She sold the business to somebody else, not the company that she had worked for. And in that case, created for herself an enormous amount of wealth by taking an idea that she thought had opportunity, a growth mindset, away from somebody who had a fixed mindset and thought it was just a waste of time. So a fail, failure is a first attempt at learning. It's reframing failure. Again, use my word, challenge and less than success. Learn from your mistakes and apply that knowledge. Well, again, whether it's in a, if any of you playing sports, whether you're playing basketball, volleyball, Soccer, swimming, you know, how do, when do you start your flip turn? Too soon, too late? A positive mental attitude is to use the word yet. I have not made that success yet. I haven't succeeded yet. Next. So I've got a couple of quotations here. These are all from the same person. It's somebody that you might know. And if you don't know him now, I would highly suggest that you watch the TV show that he's on. I think it's only failure if you put the word failure on it. I think it's part of the process of learning. Don't wait for the perfect time. You will wait forever. Always take advantage of the time that you're given and make it perfect for you. Align yourself with the right people, forge the right relationships, and you'll set yourself up for the long run. If people haven't laughed at your dreams, then you haven't, aren't dreaming enough. Just keep pushing hard, pushing forward, excuse me. Truth is the easiest thing to sell. I learned how to ski when I was a teenager. And my father-in-law, who taught me how to ski, said, if you don't fall, you're not skiing hard enough. <laughs> so that's, so who was that? Did anybody have an idea? Next slide. Damon John, uh, I won't, you don't have to respond, but of the students we have on here, does anybody recognize him from, from, um, uh, it's, to help me, it's. Shark uh, Tank. Shark Tank, from Shark Tank, thank you. I watch it regularly and I would highly recommend that you watch it. Um, if you do have to ask your parents permission to watch certain channels, uh, find out when it's on, ask them if you can watch it because it's very instructive. I will say that what, you, what you'll find is that the interview of the people placed uh, looking for money can be um, tough. Uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, personality is not the kindest person when it comes to asking questions. So you might be a little bit intimidated by it. Um, but th that's just the, remember, it's a show. Um, most 
people who you'll be asking money for are not that, um, they're not that aggressive. They can be aggressive, but they're not that aggressive. Uh, Mr. Wonderful. Uh, so next slide. A growth mindset is vital part of being an entrepreneur. Everyone can use these characteristics in their personal and professional lives. Cutting the T off of I can't to make it I can. Next. And next we're going to talk about the characteristics of a mindset. After completing that, go ahead. After completing this, you'll be able to define the entrepreneurial mindset. Describe the key characteristics of a successful entrepreneur. Next. So here's here's again. This is a this is not a business opportunity. This is just a thought, and I'd like you to take notes on it while you're doing this. So if your family takes a vacation every year, they may very well go to the same place. They may be family oriented. It may be to visit grandparents. It may be to a second house that you have. It may be to visit friends. And you probably have a routine when you get there. You all go to the ice cream shop. You all go to the coffee shop in the morning. You do the same thing. And that's fine. That's a wonderful way to live life. But what if you took a different trip? What would that trip look like to you? Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to? And when you're writing these things down, remember, this is for you. It's not for anyone else. You can share it if you want, um, but you don't have to. What would that vacation look like? Where would it be to? Would it be to someplace else in Florida, someplace else in the country, someplace else in the world? You can dream as much as you want and then lay out what that might look like. Or another way of looking at this is to, sit, is to close your eyes and say, what is it? So I'm not sure how old all of you are, but I'm assuming you're in high school. So you're 14, 15, 16, 17, eight, maybe 18. What does life look like five years from now? Just close your eyes. What does life look like? Where are you? What are you wearing? Are you wearing what I'd call business attire? Are you in an office? Are you with a lot of other people? Are you a social person? Are you in front of a customer constantly? Do you like selling, selling, telling the advantages of your product or service to other people and not mind it when someone says, I don't think so, not today. If that doesn't bother you, then, you know, something sales is a great opportunity for you. So what does the world look like? Do you like to work alone or do you like to work with other people? Um, is, are, you, are you out with animals? What does that world look like? And then if you think of that as your vision of the future and knowing where you are right now, what's it going to take for you to get from where you are right now, A, to where you want to be? What's it going to take for you to go on that different vacation? And what are you going to achieve by doing that? Now, if your response is, my family would never do that, all I'm suggesting is you're not going to know until you ask. Hey, folks. What about if this year we try something different? So try it out if you, you might like it. Next. Mindset. So we've got the entrepreneurial mindset and the growth mindset are pretty much in sync. They're operating off each other. Uh, entrepreneurial mindset is a little bit more about starting your own business. And the growth mindset is a little bit more about working for somebody else. But they're really interconnected. They're gears within your brain that are working together. I have a great belief in life, uh, having dealt with a lot of people, is that people are consistent. They're consistent. They either are neat at home and neat in their workplace and neat with their customers and neat when they go out of town to stay in a motel. They're either neat or they're not neat. I'm not passing any judgment on whether being neat is a good characteristic or a bad characteristic. I'm just saying that they're consistent. One is either and friendly and outgoing with other people, or one is not. Um, that's okay, because as I said early, early on, um, get help, find a partner. I did was in business for a lot of years, and I was actually worked with one person in six different situations, three of them, actually four of them starting a new business, new enterprise. 
he was the person who had the vision of where the business and the industry could go and what the opportunity, the big opportunities really were. So we would sit and talk and he'd lay out his vision of where our business could go and where he thought we would fit into the rest of the world. Because you, in reality, you do, you don't, you, business doesn't stand on its own. It stands all of your, all of your competitors, sort of competitors and just p other people who are in the space. And then I would take what he said and say, let, let me go work on that. And I would go and I'd say, okay, we really have, I'd go through the entrepreneurial mindset process, which we're going to really going to do next week. And I would say, well, it looks like we I can sort of narrow this down to we have three ways of getting from A to B. We can go a high loop, we can go a middle road, or we can go a low road. And these are the risks, these are the costs, these are the opportunities along the way, and these are the things that we can achieve if we get there and how long it's going to take. So sort of pros and cons of each one of those. And then it would go back and talk later on. And we'd use, I use a phrase called blue sky. We look at the sky is totally open, no clouds up there, nothing to obstruct our view. We can see as far as we can see. And we would think about all of the opportunities based on my three alternative plans that we could use. And we'd, he'd react to that. We'd talk and we'd talk. Maybe we'd find it down to two, or maybe we'd get it down to one. Okay, now what's it going to actually take to do that? Who are the people who I now get to be involved? So it wasn't that I could do, I couldn't do it all on my own. I didn't have the vision that he had. And he didn't have the, um, I guess I'd call it organizational discipline that I did. He, he just, his mind operated differently than mine. And as partners, we, it was a really super combination because we complemented each other. And that's what I was suggesting when you seek help. Try not to find a person that thinks exactly like you. So if you're both outgoing and you're both really like to sell and both of you really, really, really don't like to organize, I'm not so sure that that's a good combination. <laughs> you might want to go find somebody that will fill in that blank for you. But if you can find somebody that complements it's is weak where you are strong and is strong when you are weak, it makes a great team. It's like having, uh, you know, you, need, you need, don't need just a quarterback on the team. You need receivers. The, 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 the quarterback can't throw, throw the ball to himself or herself. They've got to have somebody out there to receive it. So next. An entrepreneurial mindset is a state of mind that entrepreneurs live by as they approach opportunities and business ideas. Their mindset helps them overcome obstacles improve their abilities and learn from their mistakes because mistakes will come along. So if you ever have the opportunity and you actually, you will at the end of this series, there's going to be a panel. It is very easy and very simple and very um, concise to talk about successes. I got introduced and it was about my successes. Ask people on the panel to talk about their biggest disappointment, their biggest failure. And I will guarantee you, uh, I won't guarantee it. I will assure you that most people, their face will light up. The speaker's face will light up when they hear that question because they will say, let me tell you about the time. And they will recount a time that wasn't so successful. And the reason that so, they'll, they'll smile so much is because they made it through. It didn't work out for them. It, in some cases, uh, it didn't work. It worked out very badly, um, but they made it through, and that's where they really learned a awful lot more than they did when they, uh, you know, I started three companies. They weren't. <laughs> it wasn't that easy, but I can laugh at it now because I made it through. So that's what an entrepreneurial mindset is. They learn from their mistakes. Next. So success is what we see on the surface. Oh, success, look at the awards, look at the accolades, look at the business awards, look at the money. Uh, that's what people see. What they don't see is they don't see failure, they don't see sacrifice, they don't see the discipline that you had to instill in yourself to say, uh, uh, I've worked all day and now I'm at home and it's uh, I've got a family to feed, or it's just me 
and I'm tired, but you know something, I've got two more hours of work than I need to do on this on my card table, because that's where most of these businesses started for me. It was on a card table with my home laptop working after I'd been working my other job. I was very, very, as were my partners, very, very disciplined about not starting our business while we were being paid by somebody else. So I wasn't sitting at work working on it. I was working on it after work because that just, that's just me. That's who I am. I'm a very principled person that way. So discipline, dedication, not giving up, hard work, persistence, disappointment. So that's what you don't see is all this stuff underneath the surface. Um, and you don't, and you, and you will not hear it from your, your, uh, your friends or the people you'll grow in business. Though, so it'll take you, it'll take some deep diving in discussions for you to get past. Oh, I got promoted, but look at what happened in the in the interim. So, how about the next one? Entrepreneurial mindset characteristics, and these are not all of them. These are some of them. And I'd like you to write down what the ones that you think that come to mind to you. And also write down the ones that or put a check mark or a star next to the ones where you really think you have a have some strength. And maybe put a um I don't want to put a, a minus sign. I'd put a I'd put a need need to work on N T W O. Need to work on this. Adaptable decisive, creative, problem solver, critical thinker, persevering, risk taker, and self-confident. So let's talk a little bit about risk taking. Um, risk is you um, put something out, whether it's your effort or your time or your energy or your money with the risk of losing it. Gee, I could have been doing all this other stuff, fun stuff, when I was working on my business and it didn't work out. What a waste of time. No, if you learn something, it wasn't a waste of time. So it's making judgments that are risk, what I call risk appropriate. Am I willing to lose this? The mistake is that some people risk everything. Um, my advice to people who are usually working and very often have a family is decide how much it is that you're willing to risk. Don't mortgage your house, save enough money that your family can get by for six months without you working at all and be willing to risk the other money, the money that you put aside. What does that take? That takes a lot of discipline to save because we're talking about, could be talking about a fair amount of money, not five or $600, but thousands and thousands of dollars, perhaps tens of thousands of dollars is to make those judgments, use the same logic and risk-taking as you would about your business. Uh, next. So one, adaptable. What does adaptable I mean? You adapt to do or changing requirements, take set setbacks in stride, learn from your failures, and if needed, change your approach. So it, it could have happened today where something didn't work out the way you wanted it to. And your response could be, I won't say the words, but you know what I'm talking about and say, I give up. I'm not doing that anymore. No, to be adaptable is to take that and learn from it. If something isn't working, change something else. And that may be something as simple as going to that friend who offended you, going to that teacher who challenged you, uh, not understanding something, and ask them for help. I, I can't stress enough the need for you to be open and um, willing to ask for help. It's not easy. We all want to think that we're independent, uh, self-motivated, um, self-energized, uh, and have all the answers. And the fact is that we don't. Uh, we need help constantly. Whether that's just a word of encouragement, or whether it's real help, like, I hate organization. I need an organization partner to work with me. So it's adaptable. Uh, listening to others, in particular, listening to um, listening to your customers. I, I can't, uh, I'll stress this also, is um, 
I had I had one client who was doing an enormous amount of work and investing an enormous amount of money, and he refused to talk to his customers because he was afraid they would steal his idea. So what he was doing was developing a product um, that in the end, no one was going to buy. Because when I, when he told me, when he, I had to sign a document that said, I wouldn't, I promise not to tell anybody else. He could have done that with anybody. And I went back to my computer and I Googled in the product category and uh, two initials showed up. Um, a company that's not in the same state that, a good state that it was 10 years ago, but GE showed up. And one of my concepts of business was, if you think you're gonna go into a business and you Google the business and GE shows up, find another business because his costs, his costs were more than what GE was selling the same product for. He didn't even know that GE was in the market because he was gonna keep a deep, dark secret so don't do that. Talk to people. Um, if you have to sign, they have to sign what's called a non-disclosure agreement, NDA. You can get them online. Do that. Most of the times you don't need that. But don't hide in a hole because you're afraid that someone's going to steal your idea. Entrepreneurial thinking is decisive. You make the right decisions quickly and effectively, and you stick to them until you've proven to be wrong. To be a good leader, you need to make informed decisions, gather and assess necessary information, and evaluate any alternatives. Your business livelihood may depend on it. So speaking of good leader, i got to watch my time here. We have to mention good. One of the people who is often looked up to um, as being a, a, a great entrepreneur, and he was, but he doesn't really fit many of these characteristics, is Steve Jobs. Uh, Steve Jobs was Steve Wozniak's partner. He was the business guy behind Apple. Um, but he had some personal uh, characteristics which um, no good leader would want. He had a tendency to be approached by you and say, Steve, I've got this idea. And he would listen to you for about 30 seconds. And then he would say that idea was, and I can't say it online, uh, not a very pretty word. And then the next day, making you feel like nothing, like a worm. And the next day, walk into the group meeting, say, I have this really good idea. Throw out your idea and not give you credit for it. He was legendary for doing that. So, so when it says to be a good leader, it's not just to make informed decisions and gather information, but it's to attribute the ideas to the person who, where they came from. So next. Creative, this is a big one. You explore many different, sometimes unorthodox solutions. You listen to your customers to continue to innovate, including being open-minded about unusual ways to solve an issue. You use feedback to look for new solutions and then adjust your approach. So one of the things that we're gonna talk about, and I don't wanna get too far ahead of myself uh, in the next couple of sessions is the idea how you do this. And you do it by sitting around in a group because it's group is much better than, group think is much better than your own think because we, as much as we wanna be adaptable and creative, we, we still wanna do this and keep our, keep our horse blinders on is some of the goofy, ideas that can come up and you laugh about them, but the more you laugh about them, the more imaginative everyone becomes and you get out of this blinders mindset and you put them all on a post-it and you put them up on the wall and they're crazy ideas. And every time you put up a crazy idea, someone comes up with a crazier one and then someone comes up with one that is truly imaginative. that says everyone, stops they almost stop breathing because you put up this idea that they go you just hit the nail on the head and it doesn't come from like grinding away i think i'm gonna i got my pen here i'm gonna write down all the great ideas i have it comes from being in a group so that's how but being innovative including being open-minded about unusual ways to solve an issue you use feedback to look for new solutions and then adjust your approach 
and give credit where credit is due. Next. You're a problem solver. That's what this lacrosse player is. Uh, we got the defensive man in orange looking for the ball. The guy in white has lost it. Oh, what's the problem here? Where do, how do I solve this problem? That's what you do is you're constantly looking for feedback about where you are, what the opportunities are, what has hit what you've tried and what didn't work out, what tried and you did work out, and that sort of forms the new pathway that you're going on. It's kind of like being lost, well, I'd say being lost in a snowstorm because I doubt whether any of you have been lost in a snowstorm, but if you were lost in a windstorm, with it, you, you become totally disoriented and you want to hang on. So you hang on to the fence post or the or the signpost because you, there you know where you are and you have an opportunity to take that next step. You analyze and research a problem, identifying the root cause and apply all that knowledge to find the creative solution. That's an interesting point. They, they, they point out the root cause of the problem. Defining the problem is sometimes a challenge because it not may not be that obvious. And I, I know we've got one coming up next week where um, uh, I don't agree with, <laughs> I don't agree with the root cause of the problem. <laughs> and I'll point that out when we get there. That's a, that's, a, that's a teaser to get you to come back next week. Entrepreneurs use all the tools at their disposal to solve problems and continue to move forward. That's what I'll call, I'll use the word, and if you haven't heard it before, it's called iterations. Iteration means that you are at a point, you see a problem, you come up with a solution, you try that problem, either, and if it doesn't work, you go back to the square one. What was the real problem? What are my alternatives? That one didn't work, so let's go to number two. They're called iterations. It's going back in a circle constantly. Critical thinking. You think clearly and rationally, and use information and logic to arrive at the best possible conclusion. And sometimes you get to the point where you're just scratching your head and you can't do it anymore, then take a break, okay? Take a break. There's nothing wrong with that. Next. It's thinking. It's thinking, that's okay. It's persevering. Yes, That's, it's persevering. You never give up on your dreams, and you don't let problems or failures get in your way. I, I think that's a great attitude, and it's the attitude to go into. But as I think that I mentioned earlier, um, every every solution driven effort, no matter what it is. Um, has a point where you have to make a decision to, to, I won't say give up. I would say close down that option because you can just grind and grind and grind away. And if you're not making progress, real progress, again, that's the advantage of having someone who can give you what I call a dope slap and say, Jeff, we're not really making any progress. I think we need to take a different tack on this. Or I think we need to find a different business to follow. I think the odd thing, you can also say the same, same thing about being diverted. Um, so say you're in the uh, peanut butter chocolate chip cookie making business and someone comes along and you're selling some, I'll, I'll just do, I'll do, I can just do this so there are a couple more that we can, okay. we can do, I can do it. Uh, you're in the chocolate chip or in the, in the peanut butter cookie making business and you're selling some, but you're not really selling a lot. And someone comes along and says, hey, you know, um, I need some peanut butter candy you know, with chocolate around it, like a Reese's peanut butter cup. Can you make it? And you go, and it's a big order. And you go, well, peanut butter candy is not that far away from peanut butter cookies and it, there's money in it. And uh, so you uh, take the order. And so now your effort is not is divided between peanut butter cookies and peanut butter candy. And then somebody comes along and says, hey, I had those at a party, they were really good. How about, could you make me a peanut butter cake? And all of a sudden you get farther and farther and farther away. And pretty soon you're selling peanut butter smelling 
t-shirts, which are a long, long, long way from peanut butter cookies. Now, having done that, I can speak to it directly. So on the one hand, is there a time to just say that's enough and give up? Not I, I don't like you to give up. Move on to something else. Yes, and there's also a time to, to um, say, let's stay on track and forgive that, for, forgo that order that could make you some money. And uh, no, I, I, that's a tough decision. That's a risk taking decision that you shouldn't do alone. So let's see where we are. Uh, persevering, no, next one. Risk taker, there we go, risk taker. Taking a risk is vital to starting a new business. Failure is not the opposite of success. It is the stepping stone to success. For anyone who is an entrepreneur, that is perhaps the most important lesson. And there's a saying in the venture capital community, fail early, fail cheap. Meaning before you spend an awful lot of time, before you spend an awful lot of money, find out whether this business is really going to work or not. And then the last one is uh, self-confident. You are confident in your abilities. I don't like the word certain because that's a little bit self-centered for me. You are confident in your abilities. You believe in what is possible and what can be achieved. You are willing to take risks, but you can serve enough not to risk things that are beyond your abilities. And with that, I'd like to close this off. Mindset is not fixed. You can change your mindset. So when you go down those characteristics and you put a plus after some of them that uh, need to work on these, don't be discouraged by that. I've seen people's lives change dramatically, dramatically. It takes time and it takes effort, but you can do it. I can change me, I can change my idea. And with that, thank you for your attention today. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much. Uh, students, we have about a minute or two left. Does anyone have any, any questions? Feel free to drop them in the chat or you can unmute and ask. All right, it doesn't seem like we have any. Um, Jeffrey, thank you. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Leslie, thank you for being on here and for the partnership with Junior Achievement of Southwest Florida. Um, I'm Kelly Thawley with the School District of Lee County and um, signing off. So we hope to see you all. I do want to make sure that I show you where you can find these. So I'll do one last screen share. Yes, thank you, Leticia. Thank you. I hope I do this properly. Fajaline? Fajaline? I hope I got it right. Glad you were here. All right. So this is the video library that we have for our career in tech ed. Uh, this is where we will make sure that if you come down here and you go to playlist, you will be able to see there is our season one from Are You Ready? Uh, this was telling you uh, different pathways from high school to career. So we'll have a second one here that will be for Are You Ready? Season two be entrepreneurial. Um, and thank you again to our presenter, Jeff, and to our partner, Leslie. Um, make sure that you are all back with us uh, next week. We will be here, same place, same time, next Tuesday from four to five, and we will be starting on session two. So we will see you all then. Thank you, everyone. Good. Thank you. Thank you Look Jeff. forward to seeing you next week.